to prove it. More perfectly ordinary people, boy, are some of them ordinary this week, doing extraordinary things. So let's meet our first guest for this week. Here he is, he's from East London. He's called Anthony Irvin. <laughs> And, and you don't look silly, Anthony, and I think that's so important. Thank um, you. Yes. That's uh, very reassuring. Can't help noticing you've got a large block of, well, basically ice. Yes, that is correct. It's very perceptive of you. So, so what that's, are you going to do? Well, basically, I'm going to melt this block of ice even faster than it would melt normally. You're going to prove yes. that by the end of the show you can melt yes, this entire this block program, of ice. Yes, this entire block of ice would be melted, and what's more, there's a duck in an empty tank down there, which would prove it. Because ah, yes. gradually it will rise as the level of the water rises. Sort of the, the gauge, isn't yes. it, very scientific? and possibly it might swim over. So by the end of the show you'll melt this... I mean, it's quite hot in here, but you, what, what sort of things are you going to use? Well, I'm going to utilise the, the lights and I'm going to use salt. I have de-icer spray on my head. Salt, de-icer spray? I'm going to spray. start with the most important natural phenomena, breath. Breath. And perhaps you'd like to contribute yourself. Some uh, more yes, breath okay. and more lungs. Right, can, we get the audience, can we get the audience to blow? Can, can we, we, can we, can would we you all help? just point... <laughs> Don't worry about looking silly. Come on, just... <laughs> and just point towards this block of ice and all, come on. Is that going to help? <laughs> if you knew how silly you all were... <laughs> can we get this coordinated after the count of three? One, two, three, all blow together! Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, as it gets uh, gradually smaller and smaller throughout the program. Now, you can stop doing that, you keep doing that, you uh, lot, stop for a second. I need a volunteer. What I think next, no use hiding, I need a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> I need basically someone who might be a little bit thirsty. Come on, hands up, I need someone who's thirsty. Ah, now we're getting interested, aren't we? Yes, chance of a drink. Come on, hands up, hands up, hands up, who have I got? Um, can I have a lady up there? You look very nice, darling. Can I hand you down here for a little experiment? Give her a big hand, thank you very much. Come on down. Thank you very much. You weren't too keen on volunteering, were you? You were sort of um, in two minds. What, what's your name, darling? Wendy. Wendy. And whereabouts are you from? Portsmouth. Okay, right. Now, it's a little experiment. We want to put an old theory to the test. We want to prove whether or not it's true that a trumpeter can't play his trumpet if he sees someone sucking a lemon. Okay? And you are that lemon. No, sorry, you are that, you are that someone. Sorry, so we've got the someone, we've got the lemons here. Now all we need is a trumpeter. Will you please welcome trumpet-blowing legend J.J. Stewart! <laughs> Marvellous. J.J., this is true. This is not, I mean, I've heard this a few times over the years, but trumpeters know this, that, that it, it is a theory that nobody can play a trumpet if anybody near them is sucking a lemon. So I've heard. Nobody's ever done it, but... Um... I mean, I mean, no-one in your audience has ever started anything, just trumpet you off, nothing? Well, uh, well, I work, there's no such thing as audience. Ah, I right. mean, there's usually just one person <laughs> sitting there, <laughs> sitting there yeah. not yeah. sucking a lemon. <laughs> but, but, but what do you think? Uh, I'll have a go. OK. Are you, well, are you going for this right. one? Let's yeah, give it a good, good old... Um, good go. Let's give, it, give, it a good, give it a really good, good suck, OK? And just in case we, um, we make a bit of a mess around you, JJ, just there. Very smart I don't, I don't suit. Like very the nice. Idea of this. Very nice. The man <laughs> from Millet suit. Very lovely. Um, <laughs> oh, sure, that does well. Get yourself nice and close. Hello. Hello. Sorry, that's, your that's, your name? Uh, that's JJ. Oh. Trumpet blowing legend. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> There's another one about bananas. Is it orange? Is it? <laughs> No I man can play a trumpet while you're eating a bar of chocolate. I don't know. You're, you're... Pork pie. Is that what I wrote? You're slumbering. Right. right, come on. Get, get yourself right. close. Are you ready? No, hang on. Let's get, 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 have a good go first, Wendy. Come on. Yeah, you get mm. close. That's it. Whoa. You're a single one in the world. You're glad you came, aren't you? No. OK, no. Come on. Right, we're ready. This is a serious experiment. No man can play a trumpet while somebody around him right. is sucking a lemon. <laughs> It was a brave try. It is an old, an old adage that we seem to completely disprove. <laughs> Give him a big hand. Wendy for being a great sport. And JJ Stewart. Well done. <laughs> ah, good stuff. All this time, our, uh, our ice man is trying to melt that block of ice by the end of the show. He's busy. Uh, I don't know quite what he's doing <laughs> in the studio. He's, 
He's, oh, he's using the salt now. He's going to the salt. He's got to get rid of that block of ice by the end of the show. The duck hasn't ridden much so far, as you can see. It hasn't ridden hardly at all. Anyway, let's meet our next guest. We'll be catching up with that guy in a little while. Let's meet our next guest from High and Ferris in North Hampshire, Mr John Ward. He's an inventor and cobbler. They're coming out applauding for you. You haven't done anything yet. OK, Mr Ward, now, what exactly have you, uh, have you come to prove? I've had an invent, Mr Tower. You've had an invent? Yes, I have had an invent. You've obviously heard of the Swiss Army knife. The Swiss Army knife, yes. yes. Well, I've been working on this idea and I thought of an attachment for the house. So this is going to be a boon to housewives. A labour-saving device yep. that, that will prove invaluable to housewives. The Swiss Army brush. Yep. The Swiss Army brush. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you want to do the 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 the, 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 the flues. The chimney. The, the, That's the, the word. The, yes, yes. It comes straight to mind. Yeah, no, yes. no, fine. Yes. So if you're having a barbecue, for instance, you'll obviously want to oil it down. So, so we got that. Well, yes, we got that. We got the, what, the barbecue, the brush, of painting. You bet. I, you, that, I did forget that, would I? Well, no, 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 I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, 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 no. And obviously, you're wondering about that. Aren't I was you? wondering about that. I was going to say, what's paste, that? I was going to say, toothpaste. That's toothpaste. the toothpaste for the, the toothbrush. Toothbrush. <laughs> so, now this is a serious invention, isn't it? I mean, you well, actually absolutely. think that this, this, this will be marketed? I mean, hopefully in time for Christmas. Oh, absolutely. Do you think no stocking will be complete without one of these at this Christmas? And oh, I belt. Oh. And has, has there been much interest so far from uh, from manufacturers? Um. I'm working on it. It's only a prototype. None, has there? <laughs> there will be. There's been no interest whatsoever, John, has there? There's been <laughs> absolutely no interest whatsoever. But perhaps, who knows? Who knows? This Christmas Day could be everywhere. Right? Give him a big hand. Thank you very much. John, Mr. John Moore. Thank you, John. quite how I got roped into this. Just one more O-level, I could have been a postman. Right, <laughs> now, here's, here is a very interesting lady. She comes from Bingley in West Yorkshire. Her name is Sharon Aston. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. I, I say you're an interesting lady, cos cos I know what you can do. Tell us what you come to prove. I've come to prove that I can identify celebrities in disguise. You can identify mm -hmm. celebrities in disguise. Now, you actually won a competition for doing this, didn't you? I did. What, what did you have to do? Well, there were six celebrities in the magazine, and I had to uh, identify them, even though their faces were half covered up with sombreros. They had sombreros and all masks. Yeah. And... So, how long have you had this particular skill? I mean, did you It have was a... just beginner's luck. <laughs> just tell me briefly what you got for that prize. What, what, what was it? Because uh, it was quite a prize, wasn't it? Yep, yeah, I won a brand new Mini Mayfair car and a fortnight for two in Mexico. Mm. Right, OK, OK. So, now I'll tell you what we've done, basically. It's um, in this very studio, we're going to restage the kind of competition at which Sharon excels. Um, it's sort of spot the eyeball. Ball competition. What we're going to do is bring on three well-known celebrities. Well, quite well-known. Well, well, in fact, they've been out of work so long they couldn't even get on the panel of blankety blank. <laughs> Who are these three mystery celebrities? <laughs> right, let's stand them in a line. As I say, they're three well-known celebrities. They've got nothing better to do this evening than come on this programme. Have a little look at them first. Have a look along the line. Look at them. <laughs> it's amazing to get any work at all, isn't it? Right, hang on a second. Let's have a little look. Now, any um, thoughts? I mean, the size, I would have thought, was a bit of a giveaway. I don't know. What about this? This one looks padded out, though. Yes, fat, <laughs> basically. Fat blubber. <laughs> Am I allowed to remove any nose? No, well, yes, we could take a nose off if you want. Let me have a look at that. Just stand still. Just <laughs> remove part of his or her body. I think it's a he, cos I can see a oh. bit of a beard. Oh, what a giveaway. You've got green <laughs> hair. Right, hang on a second. So, who do you think? Who do you think, Sharon? Uh, he's got very smiling eyes. Smiling I think it might eyes. be Matthew Kelly from Going for a Laugh. Let's have a little look. It's Matthew <laughs> Kelly! <laughs> right, well done. Oh. Who's this? This one, um... A lady. A lady? Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you can tell? No, it's not Annika Rice, no. How can you tell? How can she tell? She can just, it's just girlish intuition. Also, Am strong smell of her. Yes, you can remove um, everything. the nose. <laughs> there. Ah, oh, what a giveaway. <laughs> just face front. About my height. About your height, yes, sort of. Mm -hmm. Sponsored by Grow Bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're standing in a trench. Oh, that's I not an idea. But, but, well, but powerful. Susan Dando. You are. Is it? Yes. Absolutely! <laughs> oh, <laughs> now correct! What else is another? <laughs> now, who's this? Who's this? 
It's not Matthew Kelly, I can tell you that much. That's a help. It's not Suzanne Dandy. Right? Copy, I'm very versatile. You're not versatile, Matthew. <laughs> There's a time at all. Uh, can we remove the nose? Yes, I can take off the nose. Mouth or... I can't really take the mouth off. Wait, can, we, can, we have a, can we have a verbal clue? Just some sort of a clue? No, Suzanne and I will give you a clue. Can we give a clue? Can we give a clue? Yes. Can we give a clue? I think, I think it is. Please. Da, 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 da. Yeah. It's not Anita Dobson. <laughs> come on, don't be calm. Who do we think, audience? Who do we think? Any ideas? Who do we think? Are you on these senders now? Possibly and not it... one of the ones who's on there, so it's not there. So were you killed off mm. on the show? Is that Ross somewhere? Ah, Ross and Ross and one Ross. <laughs> Come on, let's have a little look. Come on. It's not easy to get Thank these you. up there. Oh, oh, Ross oh. Davidson! Oh. Well done. Well done, Sam. Well well so basically, I reckon she got three out of three. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thanks very Thank much you. to Sharon. And thanks, of course, to Ross, to Suzanne and Matthew Kelly. Thanks very much indeed. Great. <laughs> very good. Very good. Three out of three. Right. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, this gentleman said at the beginning of the show he would reduce this block of ice to water by the end of the show. He's about halfway through. He's got a little bit fine. The, 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 ducks, the duck's almost afloat. The duck is beginning it's, to just twitch I've got, a bit. I've got the duck's rain gauge. Right. Right. You started off with breath. You've used salt. You're now you're getting I'm a bit money as well. You're, you're, you're money. money. You. Why are you putting money on it? Well, bribery and corruption. You're bribing yeah. the ice, right? Fine. <laughs> OK, right, well, he still seems to have a very large ice cube, so I'll speak off for the appropriately oh. very large drink to go with it. You brought me Don't up. you go away. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Join us again. Be surprised to find dirty plates and glasses beating a path towards the best thing to happen to dishwashers in ages. New concentrated sun liquid. Because it's a liquid, new sun dissolves more easily and goes to work much faster. So it leaves everything gleaming. New sun liquid. Only when it pours will you get that sunshine. That was good. Right, lunch. I know. Menu Master Vegetable Curry, with its delicious blend of Indian herbs and spices and real pilau rice, is just one of the Menu Master meals from Bird's Eye. For people who think about what they eat. Definitely beats lentil burgers. Menu Master! Guess who's forgotten his yogurt? Now, what a shame. There are seven big chunks in the yogurt. Just don't buy off more than you can chew. I'm coming into town today, dear. Oh, I'll, I'll buy you lunch if you like. Great! Collect four tokens from special packs of Kellogg's Corn Flakes just now, and when you buy a McDonald's Big Mac and large fries, you get another Big Mac and large fries free. Enjoy your meal. What a nice thought. Oh, that's all right, love. No one got any pictures that time. Psst. Want to see secret shots of the latest cars? You want to read Auto Express? Visit Peter Green in Chandler's Ford and enter a new experience. You'll see one of the largest selections of carpets, curtains, and quality modern and traditional furniture in Hampshire. You won't need to look further. It's all under one roof at Peter Green. Relaxed shopping with easy free parking on the edge of town at Chandler's Ford. Welcome back. Welcome back. 
came out at the beginning of the show, this gentleman here said that by the end of the show, he would take this enormous block of ice and reduce it completely to water. Now, he's tried the salt, we did the breath test, he's done the hammer and chisel. Things now look as if they might be getting a bit desperate. He's gone on yes. to the blow lamp. Yes, yes, I'm taking You're it. losing confidence, aren't you, if well, I may say so? No, I'm just getting more ambitious, that's all. Uh, it's, um, if you notice, the duck really is almost afloat. The level is... The duck, is of course, up. floating all the time is the gauge of how much water has actually come exactly. from the ice. Spot on. So you reckon by the end of the show you can get this completely Absolutely, down yes, to nothing? Yes. OK, keep going as our studio begins to disappear in a torrent of melted ice. The show this week's getting more and more like the, uh, the sinking of the Titanic. Now, we were contacted this week by a guy called Stuart Faulkner. It's not easy to talk over a blow lab. From Abington, he's a bit of a nifty athlete. He's so nifty indeed that he reckons he could take on a kangaroo at the long jump and beat it. So we took our cameras down to Southampton Sports Stadium for the jumping battle of a lifetime. So 9.6 metres for Joe the Kangaroo. That's the biggest jump of the day. That's quite incredible. No, it's not that incredible. It's just basically it took him a series of little sort of bunny hops and it was the last one. There's nothing else this afternoon. We've proved that a kangaroo can walk along a sandpit. Time <laughs> How often have you heard cat food manufacturers say, our oh, Brand X is the number one cat food, because things like, oh, it contains real chunks of dried mads, or because <laughs> eight out of ten owners say their cats prefer it. They always say that, don't they? Prefer it to what? Prefer it to a plate of slugs? Prefer it to a clip round here? <laughs> Whatever it means, we've invited along ten cats and ten human beings into the studio tonight. Now, the humans are the ones uh, who haven't got whiskers or sharp, pointed ears. Except for this gentleman here, I'm not sure about him. I think he's probably a bulk. <laughs> right, all right, Mr. Spock. Now, basically, what we've done at the beginning of the programme, we asked all these very proud cat owners which cat food, of all the cat foods in the world they could choose from, which one they preferred, and we put the one that the, the owner is saying their cat prefers in the red bowl, OK? The red bowl. We all have a sniff of the red bowl, please. Come along. Just make sure it's the cat food that you nominated. This is your cat's favourite food, according to you, the owner. Mmm, yummy, yummy. Now, will you all just sniff the yellow bowl, then, which is um, slightly um, inferior? As in... <laughs> just go, go on, just have a little... All right, all right, Mr Spock. Right, OK. Now, so that's, that's the scheme of it. Now, in a theory, in an ideal world, when we open the, uh, the front trap here with, with your cat inside, it should go straight to the red bowl, yes? <clears throat> Mummy, yummy. You're pretty confident, aren't you? I am very confident. OK, so... <laughs> I don't know why. So, um, what's your cat called? This is Rupert. This is Rupert. OK, Rupert, any time you like, Rupert, go to that red bowl. Hopefully we should get eight out of ten. <laughs> when I say any time you like, Rupert, I meant ideally... You know, before dawn would be, um... Be, ah, straight to the red... Straight out the back of the cat box and straight up my trouser leg. What about the red bowl, Rupert? As nominated by your owner, eight out of ten prefer to go to the red bowl. Yes, I think we count Rupert as, um... I think he's a naught, really, isn't he? He's naught. He's a naught out of uh, one so far. Disappointing start, but um, probably get a lot worse as things go on. What's, what's the name of your one? This is William. William, right. Sorry, Rupert, you're a waste of Russians. Let's try it. Go, William. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, 
Oh, no. William, if you could just clear away from that yellow bowl. Let's try and say it's, um, it's basically naught out of two so far, a minus one. Right, what's, uh, what's your one called? Dennis. Dennis. Dennis the cat. Right, fine, OK. <laughs> right, go on, go for the red bowl. Dennis. Uh, no, hang on, no, not now, William. Not now. Leave Rupert there. Right, Dennis, go. Come on, Dennis. <laughs> Dennis. Come on, out there. Come on. Yes, well, we'll leave him there and sort of, if he, if he comes out, will you give me a whistle? Right, so it's basically naught out of three so far. Oh, hang on. Still going to the yellow bowl. No interest in the red bowl whatsoever. Right, number four, what's the name of your cat? Tigger. Yeah. Tigger? Right, OK, Tigger. Right, go for that roll. Let's get one of them to go to the red bowl. Ah, oh, he's happy now. Basically, should be taking the yellow bowl away. Here goes Tigger. No, there goes Tigger. Ah, there goes Tigger. We've completely lost Tigger. Tigger, Tigger. Tigger is a north, well, it's like north out of um, uh, four, five, five, Sable. What's, 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 what's the name of your cat? Sable. 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 Right, OK, Sable, do something. Send Sable. Come on, Sable. Oh, come on, so just go for the red bowl, please. Make me a happy boy, please. We just won out of ten to be nice. We were hoping for the eight. I don't think we're going to get eight, so we've got naught out of four so far. Ah, straight to the red bowl. He wavered, he didn't... Are you sure we put it in the right bowl? I got right... Straight to the red bowl. Yes. That's, yes, can I count him as a... <laughs> so, but I think he... Can I put him down as a red? Can I, oh, yes, I'm not totally convinced. So, actually, now, old William has actually started eating the red bowl now, but I think especially because he pinched his yellow bowl, which he must prefer. Right, come on, what's the name of your cat, sir? Jerry. Jerry, Jerry, right, OK, Jerry Cat. Yes, right, fine, OK, go, Jerry, go to that red bowl. Let's try and get two out of five, come on. Oh, it's one of those foreign ones. <laughs> he probably wants barbecue spare ribs or something. Go on, try... <laughs> Three of us are port balls. Go on, go to that. Yeah, no. Well, be any other red bowls, ideally. Um, what's he called? Jerry. Jerry, yes. <laughs> yes. What about the. Um, yes. Yes. Well, we, we'll leave him there and see if he goes anywhere. So we got sort of an all out of. We got one out of. Yes, about six, haven't we? We've now got a fight. Right, fine. Okay, you go there. You go there. What? Spike. Yes, good. Right, okay, here's Spike. I just want to get to the end of number 10. Here's Spike. Right, okay, come on. Look at that red bull. Yummy, mm, yummy, mm, mm, with real added. Mm, mm, mm. Ah! <laughs> ah! I've had a really good cat fight all show. Right, hang on. Um, what about the red bowl? Are you sure you haven't fed these things before? Hmm. Look at that red bowl. Hmm. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a battle. Are you sure you owners have nominated the ones? And look at the confusion amongst us all. So it's basically one out of about seven so far. Right, very quickly then, so what's the name of your cat? Will it please go to the Red Bowl? Scooter. Scoot, Scooter. Right, Scooter, go to that Red Bowl now. <laughs> Would you like a bit of Red... <laughs> Shot of actually rubbing his nose in it. I can't help anymore. Um... Ah, no, he's actually treading over the red bowl now to get towards the yellow bowl, right? So I think he's... Uh, yeah, well, we've got... Yes. Now, what's your one called? Oliver. Ollie, Oliver? Oliver? Oliver Cat. Right, so we've got basically one out of eight so far. One out of eight... <laughs> owners know what their cat's preferring in an ideal world. The others don't seem to... What's... Hello? Hello, Oliver. Here's Ollie. Be careful. Take your arm off as soon as look Come at you. Come on, then. Come on, then. There, right. Come on, Holly. Holly. Please, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> Go to that yellow ball! <laughs> so it's one out of nine. Now, please, come on, let's get you. What's your cat called? Yasmin. Yasmin, right. Okay, it's silly names. This is very silly cat, very silly oh, owners, yeah. right. <laughs> I think you're influencing the judgment a bit unduly. I think the, um, the judge has made his side. And he still doesn't actually seem. They won't must do anything in the world. He said he'd any of that stuff in the red bowl, won't they? Where will he end? <laughs> no, absolutely no idea. Not to worry. I think basically <laughs> on this uh, on this proud note, I think we we'll basically say thank you very much to all these cat owners and their pets. Thank you very much for the game. <laughs> basically, one out of ten owners knew what their cat preferred. I think um, I think they proved something. I think, um, I think I'm beginning to lose the will to live. <laughs> now, just time to have one last look. Meanwhile, at our uh, rapidly diminishing ice cube that's sadly not actually rapidly diminishing fast enough. Yes, at the top of the show, you said that you would get rid of this block of ice by the end of the show. You try, you try the hammer and chisel, you try the blow lamp, you try the saw, you try breath. It's true, um, it's true. I mean, uh, it hasn't, it's been partially successful because the duck is free fl it floating. Yes, but basically, I mean, there's actually probably yeah, more ice now than when you started. It's marginally less successful than the cat I mean, experiment. It needs a desperate remedy. A desperate remedy. What, what? Uh, something explosive. 
Well, well dynamite. I'll set it up. I'll set it up. You should be all right. Dynamite. Yes. <laughs> well, Stay clear. Keep Stay the cats clear. down. That's right. OK, right. everybody hey, OK? Well, yes, OK, okay. go. <laughs> well, there you are. Give them a big hand. Thank Still you very there. much to Anthony Everett. I'm not quite sure why. Give them a huge hand. Thanks to all these side chat of course, good night from uh, all the gang, Tiddles and William and all the rest of them and Rupert. Join us again, ah, join us again next week with another motley collection of people all saying, you never guess what I can do. And we say... Rupert! See you next week. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Good night. Michael Barrymore keeps...